Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello. Welcome to the PyTorch tutorial. This is the second video of the PyTorch tutorial series. Today's video is about downloading and visualizing datasets in PyTorch. The datasets uh, of PyTorch are mostly image datasets and uh, you can find uh, many interesting datasets actually. You just have to visit the website of torchvision.datasets and uh, you will see there are, there are various image datasets like MNIST, Fashion MNIST, KMNIST, and there is a huge list of all the datasets here. So we'll briefly discuss which dataset has how many images and uh, a little descriptions about these datasets. So there are some datasets for simple classification task. For example, the MNIST dataset, uh, it has 28 by 28 grayscale images of numbers from zero to nine. So obviously there are 10 levels as in zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there are 70,000 images in total, 60,000 training images, 10,000 test images. Same goes for Fashion MNIST. The Fashion MNIST dataset has grayscale images of dresses, which we'll see shortly. KMNIST dataset has 28 by 28 grayscale images of some peculiar letter. There is also an EMNIST dataset, which is similar to the other MNIST dataset. Next, there is a there are other datasets of object classification, object detection, object localization. For example, there is a ImageNet dataset that has various images of thousand different object categories. Then there is CIFR dataset. It has 60,000 32 by 32 colored images that are in 10 classes with 6,000 images per class. There are 50,000 training and 10,000 test images in CIFR 10 dataset. There is a STL 10 dataset. It's a a bit smaller dataset, but it ha also has 10 classes. Then there is a COCO dataset and an SBU captioned photos dataset. These uh, datasets have images and caption written below it. So we can use this dataset uh, in LSTM models, which are recurring neural networks to generate captions for images. So let's look into some simple datasets. We will not discuss COCO or SBU datasets here because these are really big datasets as in like SBU captioned photos dataset has 1 million captioned images. So it will take a lot of time to load these images in our systems. So in case if you want to train on these datasets, you have to load it first. But for today, we are going to keep it very simple. In future, we'll discuss more complicated datasets if we have to. So let's dive into the coding part. So first, of course, we have to import torch. We have to import matplotlib to plot, uh, to see the images, of course. Then we import MNIST from torchvision.datasets. So let's see how these datasets look like. One thing to notice here is that I'm putting my MNIST dataset in MNIST underscore folder. You can name it as you want. If you keep train equals to true, it means it will download the training part because 
uh, testing part has 10,000 images and training part has 60,000 images, of course. And uh, download equals to true means it will first check whether there is a data set available already downloaded. If it's not, then it will download it. So once I download the data set, I have the data set available for me. You can see MNIST folder. And here is the MNIST data set. So let's see how does it look like. It says data set MNIST, number of data points 60,000, root location, and split is train because I downloaded only the train part of the data set. Okay. So let's see just the first component, the first data in the data set. So luckily it's indexable. So we check the zeroth index and it says it's a PIL image. PIL stands for Python image library. It's a built-in image manipulation system in Python, which is very handy. So it says the size is 28 by 28, which is good. And uh, you can see it's the data type is a tuple, right? I mean, it's a parenthesis and there is a digit after comma. So it's a tuple of two elements, a PIL image and a label that says five. So obviously the first image is a five. Since it has two components, I can break it down like this. So there is one image, comma tag equals to train zero. So that image goes into image and label goes into tag. So let's see, there is a small image of five. Okay, let's see the tag, it says five. To make the image bigger, we import the image library from PIL and we resize it as 200 by 200 from 28 by 28. And it looks like this. Of course, it's a bit hazy because the original image is only 28 by 28 and I resize it to 200 by 200. But it's at least we can see that we can read the digit here in the image. It's an image of five. Okay, let's see the fashion MNIST data set. Similar way, we import the fashion MNIST from torchvision.datasets and we put it in fashion MNIST underscore folder folder. Once it's downloaded, check what it says, it says 60,000 root location. And of, of course we have downloaded train equals to true. So it also has a PIL image and there is a tag nine. Actually it, the nine stands for a type of dress in this data set. Like if we plot the data, we'll see that it's an image of a shoe, right? So similarly, we can check a different image and let's see how does it look like. Yeah, it's a shirt. Let's check the tag in this data set. Yeah, it's zero. So basically, zero is for the t-shirts and nine is for the shoes. Let's check the KMNIST dataset. Similar way, we download our dataset. All right. And we plot our image and it's a peculiar looking letter in some different language. You can read more about it in the documentation of KMNIST dataset. Okay. Once we are able to see the datasets, it's important that we can use some machine learning 
on this data sets, right? But computer in PyTorch only understand tensors. So what we have to do is we have to convert all the data sets, all the images into tensors. So can we can implement deep learning methods on it to train our models on these images. To do that, we have these packages, torch vision dot transform. We import this so that we can convert our data sets into tensors. So again, we download the MNIST data set. And this time, we tweak the code a little bit. We just write transform equals to transforms dot two tensors. What it does is, you can see that initially, the data set was a PIL image and there was a label. But now I want to change it to a tensor and I want to keep the label as it is, but I want to put it in a tensor. Once I run this code, since it's already downloaded, it will take from the downloaded uh, folder. And we are using data loader here. The reason for using data loader is when we're implementing deep neural networks, we don't want to load all the data all together in the memory. It puts a pressure on our RAM, right? So we load only 256 images at a time, and we train our model on these 256 images at one time. So we load the data at the size of batch size. Now we can check what does the train loader has. It's a data of data type data loader. Once we look into it, we have to iterate. Luckily, it is iterable, this uh, train loader. So similarly, like we did in the previous data sets, image comma level equals to uh, train index zero. Same way we have image and level in the train loader and we can print it out. And you will see that all the images are in the form of a tensor. So this tensor has 256 images, right? So this is an image, this is an image, this is an image, and there is a total of 256, and these are their labels. So the first image is a six, second image is a five, third image is a five, like that. And I have printed the length of each batch size, so you can see 20, 256 images at one time. So our goal is to load this tensor of 256 images into the RAM, train our model on this 256 images, then load next 256 images on the memory and train on those. And after that, we are done with the training, then we will test our model on the test loader. We will see the detailed description of this method in the upcoming videos. The objective for now is just to get you used to the method of data loader. Thank you.